Hello everyone and welcome. Today I want to talk about Darkest Dungeon 2's new content release, the new act, Resentment. Specifically, I want to talk about why Resentment represents a worrying trend for the rest of the game, and why I'm now worried about what its final release will look like. Really quickly, before we start, I just want to remind everybody that if you're not subscribed, please do if you want to see more content from me. And please leave a like as well, it helps tell YouTube to show my videos to more people, and it tells me that you like to see my content. But without further ado, let's jump into the video. Now the new content release overall I think is quite good, especially everything in the Shroud. I think the Shroud is one of the best areas released so far, maybe the best area released so far. Far. And as far as that goes, I think it's of upstanding quality. But the act itself has some issues. The Ordain system is great because it solves the issue of difficulty in the later stages of the game, where previously the beginning of the game was most difficult when you didn't have any mastery points or trinkets, and it would slowly turn into a cakewalk. Now it feels like a much flatter power curve overall, which is a lot more enjoyable to play throughout the entire thing. The issue is that resentment is not noticeably different than denial. The gameplay is the same, the zones are the same, the enemies are the same. The only difference is the final boss and the ordained buff. Unfortunately, the ordained buffs are almost exactly the same anyway. They do not change how you would play the game at all. For Denial, the difference is it has a chance for a 20% stun resist, 20% move resist, or 20% debuff resist. And for the Lungs, it has a chance to apply one burn on hit at a 10% chance. Everything else about the Ordained buff is the same across the two acts. Essentially, this means that the gameplay in each act is exactly the same. You would pick the same characters, you would go to the same zones, you would equip the same items, none of this changes how you would play. So essentially, by choosing what act you want at the beginning of the game, you are actually choosing what final boss you want. And at the moment, the lungs are an atrocious boss fight, but that's a topic for a different video. Now why do I think this is such an issue? Well primarily, it's that I don't really see a reason to pick Resentment over Denial. At the moment, the boss of Resentment is horrifically unbalanced and I can get every other thing about the game exactly the same in Denial. There is no meaningful difference. Now what could Red Hook do about this? Well, there are a couple options. They could add more zones and make certain zones act specific. For example, maybe you could only get the Sprawl in Denial and only the Shroud in Resentment. Alternatively, they could amp up the Ordain buff to make it actually significant to the game. Perhaps because the final boss of Resentment is essentially immune to debuffs, they could add significant debuff resist on the Ordain buff, incentivizing you to not take damage over time characters into Resentment, and instead taking them into Denial. Or on the other hand, because the most infamous part of Denial is their potential to stun lock, the Ordain buff for the Denial Act could be a significant, say, 20 or 30% chance to stun your characters on hit. Whether these options are balanced or not is a different discussion. My point is specifically to say that they should incentivize you, each act should incentivize the player to play differently. Or here's another option. Say, for example, they introduce roaming bosses like they tease the Collector as being. Perhaps certain roaming bosses only appear in certain acts. That gives you a reason to play certain characters in certain acts, as those roaming bosses would only drop specific trinkets that are only good on specific characters. Or, as a final potential suggestion, they could make each act have different requirements to reach the end. For example, currently, it is required to have one boss trophy to reach the mountain. What if, in newer acts, they have a different requirement? What if, instead of requiring a boss trophy, they instead require a certain amount of creature den completions? Or maybe, reaching the final fight of a certain number of cultist encounters at the end of each region. Maybe, to beat the final boss, you need to have defeated two deacons throughout your adventures in the act. Once again, this is just spitballing potential ideas. The point that I want to make here is that, right now, both acts have essentially the same gameplay. And if Red Hook is planning on doing five acts 
that all have the exact same gameplay with a different final boss, this game is going to get very stale very quickly. Think back to Darkest Dungeon 1, where entering each area had its own challenges and incentivized the player to take different teams. Houndmaster was a lot better in the areas that were weak to bleed, and specifically the areas that had beasts. Plague Doctor in Darkest Dungeon 1 was indispensable in the cove, especially on veteran difficulty expeditions, because of her ability to cure Dot. And of course, Crusader, although a wonderfully well-rounded character overall, and certainly capable of going in other areas, was one of the best DPS characters when taken specifically to the ruins. These differences made the player think about their team compositions and who they want to take where. Right now, there is nothing of that sort in Darkest Dungeon 2. The game get pretty stale pretty quickly. As it is, I've completed both acts on Infernal a couple times, and there just isn't enough gameplay to keep me interested until the next content drop. So I'll wait till then, complete the new act on Infernal, and then wait until more content drops. And we'll see how this game develops over time. But now I would like to know what you think. Please leave a comment below of what you think of the new act, whether you think the game is getting stale or not, and what you would change in the game. I love reading everybody's comments and I do my best to respond to every single one of them. It's one of my favorite parts of making these videos. But regardless, I hope everybody has a wonderful day.